Welcome back one and all. Today we're going to be looking at a very powerful central control feature and that indeed is the command delegator. Maybe it doesn't sound exciting but trust me it is. The command delegator essentially its initial purpose in life was to allow for the easy control of multiple PTZ cameras without having to map them over and over again, different layers, blah, blah, blah. No, map it once to the delegator and then you can easily switch delegate control. However, its value extends far beyond just PTZ cameras. And in fact, I like to think of the delegator much like a virtual KVM for all my devices in central control. The command delegator allows us to select up to eight modules in our project of the same or very similar type. The command delegator then kind of assumes the identity of these devices. So the command delegator lists the commands of the devices you've selected. That allows you to map your controllers, your physical controllers, so X keys, Stream Deck, MIDI, to the commands provided by the delegator, which are the ones of the target devices. Then you're able to easily delegate, you're getting it yet, control of the devices using either a toggle or a solo style. Toggle being select multiple at once, solo being like a one-off action, one at a time. So let's do the show and tell segment, shall we? Let's look to see what we've got for our setup. So on the controller side, I've got this X keys, XK one, two, four T bar. This is going to be our like video mixing control panel. And then I have got my stream deck who will be playing the part of the delegate. And you'll see I've got a bunch of flags at the top. We'll find out why soon, I'm sure toggle buttons, strip of toggle buttons, and a strip of solo buttons. So kind of like a matrix kind of uh, thing going on there. Now, what devices will we be controlling? Well, I don't have eight ATEMs. Um, I don't have eight Hyperdex, and I certainly don't have eight TriCasters. But what I do have is the company credit card and a whole bunch of vMix licenses. So what I've done is I've spun up eight vMix instances in the cloud, and I have been tasked with producing the Global Central Control World Summit. And because we're a global company, I need to produce it in eight languages. So we're going to use the command delegator to seamlessly drive eight of these cloud vMix instances, each of them in a different language. So English, uh, American English, Australian English, uh, Welsh, I am 25% Welsh, uh, French, Spanish, Italian, and Portuguese. That's what the flags were. So let's jump straight into the demo and have a look at the vMix project we're going to be using. All right, so just to explain what we've got set up already, this is the central control project. I've got the X keys 124 T bar. I've got my Stream Deck in here already. I think you saw I've already done my button labeling, and I've already added my eight instances of vMix. Um, if you do want to know more about connecting cloud instances of vMix to central control, there is a video on this channel all about that. And speaking of which, I guess it'd be important to show you, here are the um, eight instances of vMix all running uh, Parsec sessions up to AWS, and I can see all of them here. And just to give you a quick understanding of the central control, Global World Summit 2023. I can also show you this is the uh, vMix project. Here's just one of them. So you see we've got a starting slate. We've got a start soon message. Uh, okay, see if Google Translate. This is the French version. Got our presenter here, someone you might know. Then we've got our slideshow. And then we've got this triple box effect on the English version. It's just a double box. It's got presenter and the deck, but on the translated versions, we've got the presenter, the deck, and our translator. And it is a fairly simple vMix project, fairly simple, you know, vMix uh, virtual event kind of show. We've got a VT, we've got a Be Right Back for just in case it all goes wrong. And that is about it. So now let's take a look at how to set up the delegator. So going back to the central control project, all I need to do is I'm going to add a new device and it's going to be the command delegator. So I'm just going to come in here and type command delegator. 
click OK, click Add. And then you'll see here are where I select my eight devices. So I'm going to come in here and one by one, I'm going to select vMix. One through eight, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, just enable that, it's enabled. Now I said in the first, in the opening bit of this video that the command delegator um, kind of takes on the identity of the first device you select, and that's completely true. So if I, let's start by mapping out our X keys one, two, four, T bar. So this guy here. So I'm gonna do a very simple layout for today. Uh, we're just gonna have preview, program, auto and take, and then maybe my ticker graphic that I did set up on here. Um, but you can map anything you'd like. And indeed, I could be using an audio panel here, like a, a um, Behringer X-Touch or similar, and it will, as we'll see, it will track the feedback properly. So anyway, back to central control. Um, I'm going to click the controls icon of the X-Keys 1, 2, 4, T-Bar. I'm going to click jump to control. And this is not a mapping tutorial, so I will go through this quite quickly if it's not relevant. So normally we might select vmix1 or vmix2 and then map our commands to that. But today we're going to click the command delegator. And you'll see that the command delegator has, just like I said, it's now got all the commands of the vmix device. So I can map these to my button. So I'm going to start, we're on 8.1, which is the bottom row. We're going to do set mix preview. Set that back to one, and then I will just select, I guess I've got 12, so we'll go to 812. I will do a, a multi-select here. We'll go 812, right click, assign commands to quickly assign the whole strip. Um, and then I'll press the first program button, 71, drag all of these to multi-select them, and then I can Assign commands, amazing, and we'll do take. It's going to be 18, 5, so we'll do take mix. Yes. And then I'm going to do my auto. I only have one transition button. I could map everything I wanted as I normally could here, but kind of out of scope. So our auto mix, yep, just a fade transition, I believe we've got set up. Great. And now uh, let's just actually use this one here, one for, for our overlay graphic. So I'm going to do set overlay source. You see it, it sees all the options, all my vMix inputs, and these actually come from the very first device, which is probably important to know. Um, if you're not using the exact same vMix project, if the inputs have different IDs because you've created them at different times rather than creating it off a copy and changing the inputs. Um, you might not want to use anything that uses the drop down list because the drop down list in central control, like this, is based on the input's unique ID. Um, in that situation, be better off using the uh, commands that use either the name or the index, the number, because um, it will track better. But in my case, I made this, I created my first project, I just duplicated them to all the machines. So that is our video mixer panel done. We've mapped all of that, but not a great deal would happen right now because the panel is currently not actually delegated to anything. So let's get in there and let's set up our stream deck to uh, assign control between these devices. So let's go back to central control. And this time I'm gonna select my stream deck. Controls, now I want the second row, which is nine, and it will end at um, 16, so nine through 16. Again, I'm gonna use my quick assign techniques here. If you're not familiar with these, there are videos on this channel all about that. And we're gonna select the command delegator as our target device again. But this time we're gonna use the commands for the delegator. So the first row, if you remember, on my uh, stream deck was this um, toggle row, toggle and then solo. So we'll do toggle on all of these and then solo on all of them. Uh, back to central control, toggle, and I can do my quick assign again because it will increment that number every time. And then 17 through, what's the number, 24 is going to be um, the solo buttons to select one at a time. So we'll set that back 
two, one, just so we start over again. Assign commands, and there we go, I've got my delegator set up. All right, so I've just spent some time adjusting some of the feedback colors to make it a little bit easy to follow the stream deck. So now if we take a look, you will see uh, the ones that are off are completely off. There's no highlight, it's just off. So I've only got number one delegated at the moment. So what does that mean for us? Well, let's come back to our virtual production here. And I'm gonna punch along the uh, preview row. Here we go, you'll see it's only punching number one. But if I press the toggle on the American English version and start punching, see we're punching both of them. And then as you guessed, the more I have selected, the more machines we're operating. So let's toggle them all on. So now we're driving the whole production. So let's operate it as if we were in show. So let's get our slate online. And now let's ready the preview for uh, starting soon and let's dissolve. All of them dissolve together. And let's ready our presenter. There he is. And then we can dissolve. And then let's get ready to see our deck for the first time and dissolve. Amazing. Fantastic. And then let's go to the look with the uh, translator, the box shot. You'll see it slightly varies between the English version and the translated versions. And as you can see, the feedback works kind of as you'd expect. So right now I'm ju just on the English version and I've got one on preview five on program. But if I change that to one and three, uh, and then I can solo the American version, you'll see the feedback states just changed. If I go back and forth, you'll see the feedback changing as you would expect, tracking along with the different instances. So let's put six and seven online for this one, and then we'll go to the Australian one, and I'll punch four and five on the line. Now, as you can see, as I go across, you'll see it tracking as you would expect to represent the feedback from the vmix instances. So I've just had word that disaster has struck and we've actually lost the translator for the Welsh version of the production. So just a moment ago, you kind of saw we were running the production all as one with every device selected. But now we need to get in there and we need to send the Welsh viewers to the Be Right Back screen until we can resume connection with the Welsh translator. So let's take a look at how we do that. So I'm just gonna very simply come over here here is the Welsh one. I'm going to press solo. So that's the only vMix system we are controlling right now. And I'm going to preview the um, B right back slate. There it is. And I'm just going to do an auto to that. And you'll see that the only one that changed was indeed the Welsh version. So once I eventually regain connection back with the Welsh translator, all I need to do is I'm just going to put back to boxes. We're back in show as normal. Let me just re-establish the connection. There he is. Um, and now I can, taking a look here, all we can need to do is we'll do toggle for all of these to take back control of each one of the vmixes. And then I can go back to punching my show as normal. We can roll the VT for the big important reveal. There it is. And really, it's as simple as that. I hope that's been a helpful overview of what you can do with the command delegator. Using it to control eight cloud instances of vMix is probably a little bit on the extreme side, but I'm sure you can think of ways that you could apply this to your productions. Like I said, you can use this with Hyperdex, TriCaster, ATEM. It really doesn't matter as long as it's all the same type of device. So you could have eight generic OSC senders, or maybe you've got a bunch of uh, HTTP requests and modules that all are targeted at different IP addresses. This way, you can very easily dynamically assign control between your devices. Kind of like I said at the start, it becomes a KVM for all your devices in central control. That'll be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And stay tuned next week because I believe Ollie's got another episode of The Basics where he's going to teach us all about control mapping. Take care.